Zoom in. I'm Nicole. So look, the distance between Edmonton and Sunrise, Florida is 2,500 miles. There are four winds, which are the difference between Lord Stanley or no Lord Stanley. Hardcore hockey fans know this season the Panthers were celebrating three decades in the NHL. They are now three wins away from celebrating their first ever Stanley Cup championship. For complete post-game coverage as game one is just wrapped, we send it to Steve Levy and company right on the ice, just a couple sections above where it all took place. Steve, it's all yours. Sports Center on the Road is presented by Geico. Get more with Geico. Fans filing out of Amherst Bank Arena here in Sunrise. They will do so hysterically happy following a 3-0 shutout by the home team. And this really could not have gone any better for the Florida Panthers. Uh, impressive efforts by Sergei Bobrovsky and P.K. Subban, because quite frankly, I thought you'd already be at the elbow room. And, <laughs> and here you are, you're still with us. So, I mean, the Oilers have to feel very good about the first two periods, but Florida locked them down in that third period. Well, if you have to look for a start tonight, it was Bobrovsky. He held them in there for the entire game, to be honest with you. I thought Edmonton played a solid game. Uh, from start to finish, but they did get locked down. Florida got to their game in the third yeah. period there and really kind of saw that pressure for check and didn't let Edmonton off the mat in the third period. I said before the game, best defensive team in hockey, and they showed it. They bet, they didn't break. Yeah. Uh, Bobrovsky was there to shut the door when mis mistakes were made, but I thought they did enough to win this game. They kept everything fairly to the outside. Bobrov's going to stop everything as long as it's to the outside. Yep. I thought they did a decent job of controlling the middle in the latter part of the game. Mm. First part of the game, nerves. It is what it is. Hey, best defensive team in hockey. They gave up the fewest goals all season long. They didn't give up a single goal here in game one of this Stanley Cup final. See the Oilers 23 and 14 all time record. The Stanley Cup final messes on all three 21 wins. Uh, 23 wins, none of the 14 losses, I'm sure. <laughs> Mike McDaniel, the Dolphins head coach he in the building, the getting the crowd fired up. This is 15 seconds in. That's Bob's only mistake of the game, and it's on Hyman and McDavid. They don't score. Well, this was this was big because you know you you would think with all the mistakes that were made in the first that Edmonton was going to get on the board. They didn't. They stuck with it, but Bobrovsky was the story. Three on two for the Panthers. Barkov the Carter for Hagee. Just a small mistake inside the offensive zone for the Oilers there. McDavid gets on the backside of Barkov, and Barkov showed his explosive speed for a big man, of course, makes a beautiful play across to Verhage, and he makes Ver a mistake. Swaggy again. A couple minutes later, McDavid gets by Aaron Ekblad. He's cruising in. Bobrovsky denies. Yeah, Connor did some dancing tonight. He was, he was tic-tac-toe and tiptoeing around a couple guys. Just couldn't beat Bobrovsky. Bobrovsky. Hey, seems like it's just a ton of breaks. I mean, look at this. Here's Adam Henrique. Ski. Yep. And Bobrovsky, another stop. We kept oh. talking about the neutral zone being an, a, an important part for the Florida Panthers in this series there. And sure enough, they got a couple of, Edmonton got a couple of breakaways. And who's to save them every time they did? did? Bobrovsky. Unbelievable. But they're going to have to really shore up the neutral zone as the series goes on because the Edmonton Oilers will not be denied. They will score in this series, and they will score more than one or two goals at some point in these games. And all those great chances are all down low on Bobrovsky when everybody knows get it upstairs. Got to get the got to beat him upstairs. All the percentages, all the stats are showing that they got to beat him upstairs. This Sam was, Bennett. This was a tough play for Evan Edmonton. Rodriguez. Yeah, too many guys standing around here for me. You can't have your hands on your stick. You know, Van has got to get to the middle of the ice, but not enough communication, not hard enough in the battle. You can't afford to take a shift off against the Panthers. Just can't happen. Under nine minutes to go, Leon Dreisaitl. He stopped. Look at this. Unbelievable. I'm not sure if he stopped that. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe crossbar maybe. Man, he was he was the acrobatics. I mean, unbelievable. Look at the push though, the double oh. push across to the cover of the net. Uh, incredible athleticism. Latter stages of the second period, right back the other way. You know what? Stuart Skinner, it, no one's gonna talk about it. It's a great he played point. a solid yes. game tonight. He was very, very good. He gave him a chance to win this game. And the third period, you can see Florida's got 13 shots on goal. And Bobrovsky to stop there. Well, they had a couple power plays at the start as well, so that kind of put them on their heels. But I thought most of it they kept to the outside. 
Oilers can't be disappointed in the effort. They can't be disappointed in their execution. They made a couple mistakes that Florida is able to capitalize on it. But they got to feel good going into this next game for, uh, after this performance tonight. Uh, three years ago, Sergei Bobrovsky signed a seven-year, $70 million contract which at the time did not seem like it didn't have a great first season, but now these back-to-back -back seasons, oh. quite frankly, all of my buddies in social media, they're wondering how come you're not giving Bobrovsky the Igor Shosturkin treatment that you gave him last round. Well, the Igor Shosturkin was all-world. He had to be yeah. because of the Florida Panthers and how well they played. Bobrovsky didn't have to do as much. He still had to make great saves. He did, but he did not have the workload. He didn't have anything good tonight. Of the workload First two periods that Shesterkin tonight. had. He was unbelievable tonight. He got the workload tonight. And that's why I said it before the game. This guy's going to be, in my it's either him or Barkov. They're the two most important guys. Tom Fitzgerald says, when you're building a team, you build it from the net up the middle. Start with your goaltender, defense, and Florida Panthers. From their goaltender all the way up the middle of their lineup, whether it's Barkov, Bennett, Lundell, back to their defense, Forsling, Ekblad, and then Bobrovsky kicking them. This team is the best defensive team in the National Hockey League, and it showed tonight. Oilers had uh, three power play opportunities, and they had some good attack time on the power plays and just don't have anything to show for it. Yeah, you, they looked so dangerous on the power play tonight. And in fact, it ended up being the difference in the game because normally they score on some of those opportunities. But for me, what was really noticeable in this game, especially in the first two periods, was the speed of the Oilers. They forced their uh, Florida into making mistakes at times. Uh, they got in behind the Florida defense. They had some great opportunities. And I will disagree a little bit with PK. Yeah, because I go after Bur him. Because I thought Bobrovsky was the difference in this game, and he played unbelievable, especially early when the Oilers could have jumped big out time. to a two or three goal lead, and it would have been a completely different story there. So I thought he had a big workload. He made all the saves that he needed to make early in the game to get his team, get the equilibrium, get their balance. It looked a little tight to me early in the game, yep. but what a performance again by Bobrovsky. And if I'm the Edmonton Oilers there, I know you're disappointed you lost the game, yeah. but I got to feel good about the way they played the game, and the speed was noticeable today for them, and they they were able to kind of dictate the pace of the game, which favored them, in my opinion. Some unsung heroes for the Florida Panthers. Sure. Lusterinen yeah. was unbelievable tonight. Yes. Tarasenko, no one's going to talk. He made so many smart yeah. plays. So you're seeing the depth of the Florida Panthers start to show every time. Ekblad was great on defense as well. I saw his dad today in the elevator. Said he was going to play a great game. Played his best one of the yeah, playoffs he did. today. Yeah, he Sergey Borovsky is 35 years old, and you'll be happy to know, PK, that ESPN bet now this is updated. Bobrovsky is now the favorite. I already said the that. Favorite. No, 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 no. I already said it. Can, you, can your team play much better than that and not win? Uh, can the team play much better than that and not win? <laughs> yes, yeah, it's tough one. That's a... Got to give me a minute with that. Um, like I said, there was there was lots to like. Um, we generated chances. We had looks. Um, not a ton of puck luck um, around their net. Um, some weird plays in there, but um, they're a good team. Um, give them credit. They did enough to win. So here's your first look at the updated odds for the Stanley Cup final according to ESPN Bet. Panthers are minus 140 favorites to open the series 2-0 while the Oilers enter game two as road dogs again. Now as for the series odds, uh, Florida now minus 250 favorite to win its first Stanley Cup while the Oilers odds have now dropped to plus 200. On the road in Sunrise, Florida, and the traditional rats celebration for the Panthers. They put them on the <laughs> scoreboard. If you, if you throw rats on the ice, you'll be ejected from the building. You know what? I don't think so. They'd have to kick out thousands of fans here. It's rats, the good kind, for the Florida Panthers who go up one game to none in this best of seven Stanley Cup final series. Steve Levy along with Mark Messier and P.K. Subban. This surprised me. The Oilers are now 3-10 and ten in games won in the McDavid era. And in those 10 losses where they lost in game one, they actually have a winning record in the series. So obviously the ability to bounce back. But this is one of those rare games where both teams could probably feel good about themselves. Edmund likes the way they played, and Florida feels good about winning game one. Well, I think Florida w feels very good about uh, winning game one because I don't think they feel they played their best game. I think they, Barbrowski played the kind of game that you would expect him to play coming into the series, and he did. He delivered uh, as advertised. But for me, 
uh, the speed of Edmonton was noticeable. For the first time in the playoffs, I thought Florida looked vulnerable at times because of Edmonton's speed. They forechecked well. They got a lot of opportunities. Uh, got in behind the, uh, Florida's defense a few times. Bobrovsky bailed them out. And the only difference in this game to me early, especially early, is when Edmonton had a power play. Normally, we see them capitalize on those chances in the power play. They weren't able to tonight. Their penalty killing was good. Their yeah. power play looked great, although they didn't capitalize. So overall, the Edmonton's game was strong. Florida, in the third period, finally, that we talked about, finally were able to kind of start to kind of compress them, like the bull constrictor defense, and really shut them down. But for the first two periods, I thought Edmonton looked really good. PK, if we say this, is see the same exact game in game two, does, does Edmonton win that hockey game? Well, Sergei Bobrovsky, at the end of the day, when the game started, the Florida Panthers were not ready to play. Let's be honest about it. They were nervous. They looked nervous out there. Sergey Bobrovsky, he, he covered a lot of those mistakes. For me, it's the game within the game. Florida's got to control the middle of the ice. They didn't do that for the first half of the game. That's why Edmonton looked as fast as they did. So that's what they'll look to change in game two. Oh, well, Florida loves to check forward all over the ice. You see that in the neutral zone. They love to check forward. When you don't get man or you don't get puck or you're lackadaisical, it's going to end up in a breakaway. So Florida plays a style of play that's difficult to play, but when they do it to a T, they're the best team on the ice. When they don't, there's holes in it. So Edmonton, give them credit. They played really, really hard for 60 minutes, yeah. but Florida bent. They didn't break. Florida's start was too much to overcome for the Oilers. Two goals on their first five shots for the Florida Panthers, and that's among the stories in this game one of the Stanley Cup final.